opening hymn is number 372, 372. of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinance that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land of the Lord, the God of your ancestors is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command, nor take anything away from it. But keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and your discernment to the people, who when they hear these statues will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is wherever we call to him? And what other great nation has structures and ordinance as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 15, found on page 599 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 15. Let us pray the psalm in unison. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill, whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. A reading from the first letter of James. Every generous gift of giving and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits to his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately 
forget what they look like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseverance, being not hearers, but forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are, re are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unsustained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Hymn 436, 436. Thank you. who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees said the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandoned the commandment of God 
and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Many years ago now, I was visiting my friend Jackie in Southern California. We went to dinner at Dawn's home. Dawn, also now a friend, is an Orthodox Jew, and we were there for the Sabbath dinner. Dawn's kitchen was huge. It needed to be, as it had two sinks completely separated from one another two stoves, two refrigerators, two dishwashers, and duplicate complete sets of pots, pans, and dishes so that kosher was maintained. Dairy and meat needed to be separated at all times. I admired Dawn's care to follow Jewish dietary laws to keep kosher by eating only what is fit or clean, from the Hebrew word kasher. To some people, following such purity laws as a way to express your relationship with God might appear trivial. But in Mark's Gospel for this week, we see how ritual purity and holiness codes formed the background context for the mission and message of Jesus. The dietary restrictions that my friend observed and continues to observe comprise only a small part of a comprehensive and complex holiness code that regulated personal and community life for the emergent Hebrew people 3,500 years ago. By one count, there are 613 mitzvah or commandments in the first five books of Moses, the Torah. The purity laws of Leviticus chapters 11 through 26 specify in detail clean and unclean foods, purity rituals after childbirth, regulations for skin infections and contaminated clothing or furniture, prohibitions against contact with a human corpse or dead animal, instructions about nocturnal emissions, laws regarding bodily discharges, agricultural guidelines about planting seeds and mating animals, and decrees about lawful sexual relationships, keeping the Sabbath, forsaking idols, and even tattoos. <laughs> The Levitical purity laws encompassed nearly every aspect of being human. Birth, death, sex, gender, health, economics, jurisprudence, social relations, hygiene, marriage, behavior, and certainly ethnicity. Gentiles were automatically considered impure. Some of these purity laws encoded simple common sense or moral ideals that we gladly follow today, like prohibitions against incest. Others regulated hygiene and sanitation. Still others symbolized that 
Israel was to maintain a unique identity that differentiated its people from pagan nations. Ultimately, though, the purity laws and holiness code ritualized an exhortation from Yahweh. Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. When the psalmist for this week asks, Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? The proper response is that only people who are ritually clean may approach a holy God. At the center of the purity system, both literally and symbolically, stood the temple, where one performed rites of purification. Scholars debate just how much or how little ordinary first-century Jews concerned themselves with maintaining ritual purity. But the Pharisees, about whom we read so much in the Gospels, certainly did. Throughout the Gospels, they repeatedly confronted Jesus because of his flagrant disregard for ritual purity. Jesus, the Jew, touched a leper. His disciples did not fast. He ignored Sabbath laws. He touched a woman with a discharge and handled the corpse. And immediately after this week's story, he healed two Gentiles. In the Gospel reading this week, which some scholars consider the most important of all of the purity texts, Mark recounts a clash between Jesus and the Pharisees about food purity. Why, asked the Pharisees, did Jesus' disciples eat with unclean hands? Mark includes two parenthetical explanations to his Gentile readers who otherwise might have been clueless. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. Then, in an aside that we might find trivial, but as readers would have found shocking, Mark writes that Jesus thus declared all foods clean. That's in verse 19, which the lectionary skips today. <laughs> Nor should we miss the central accusation in this clash, that the Pharisees considered Jesus and his followers as ritually unclean sinners. Given the human propensity for justifying our own selves and for scapegoating others, the holiness code and purity laws lent themselves to a spiritual stratification or hierarchy between the ritually clean who considered themselves to be close to God and the unclean who were shunned as impure sinners who were very far from God. Instead of expressing the holiness of God, ritual purity became a means of excluding people considered dirty, polluted, or contaminated. In word and in deed, Jesus ignored, disregarded, and perhaps even actively demolished these distinctions of a ritual purity as a measure of spiritual status. In Marcus Borg's view, Jesus turned the purity system with its sharp social boundaries on its head and in its place substituted a radically alternate social vision. The new community that Jesus announced would be characterized by
by interior compassion for everyone, not external compliance to a purity code, by radical inclusivity rather than hierarchical exclusivity, and by inward transformation rather than outward ritual. In place of, be holy for I am holy, says Borg, Jesus deliberately substituted the call to be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Megan McKenna writes, Mark wants to emphasize exactly what Jesus is teaching, in it, what Jesus is teaching, inward devotion is much holier than any outward appearance of obedience to rules. In this encounter between Jesus and the Pharisees, Jesus acts as a teacher, trying to explain what is important and why the laws existed in the first place. Rigid adherence to a law can ignore a crucial call for the conversion of heart and practice. Jesus was very clear. No law was to be used to exclude another person. And no law was to override compassion, forgiveness, and a welcoming inclusion into the community. Gary Wills writes in What Jesus Meant, no outcasts were cast out far enough in Jesus' world to make him shun them. Not Roman collab co collaborators, not lepers, not prostitutes, not the crazed, not the possessed. Are there people now who could possibly be outside his encompassing love? In a tragic irony, of course, some Christians have considered Jews accursed, not to mention gays and feminists and so many others. I have found it a humbling exercise to ask, what categories of outcasts do I sanctimoniously spurn as impure, unclean, dirty, contaminated, and in my mind, far from God. How have I distorted the self-sacrificing egalitarian love of God into self-serving exclusionary elitism? What boundaries do I wrongly build or might I bravely shatter. I pray to more fully experience what Marcus Borg calls a community shaped not by the ethos and politics of purity, but by the ethos and politics of compassion. A community shaped not by the ethos and politics of purity but by the ethos and politics of compassion. May it be so, and let it begin with me. Amen. And now, if able, please stand as we affirm our faith using the Nicene Creed page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and revel your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all of the nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Give us all a reverence for the earth in your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are linked closely with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love another as he loved us, the clean and the unclean. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to you, to your mercy, all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Let us also pray for Helen, Marnie Malasandi, <coughs> Stephen, Tom Reed, Susan, Kyla Ellard, Julie and Rich, Caleb, Melissa, Harry, Carl Jensen, Kitty, Elma Decker, Tom, Mark, Elizabeth, Aaron Kochman, Kathleen Woodward, Lee Kuno, Heather, Jonna, Gabby and Alex Olson, Nadine Rutherford, Dorothy, Shana Kellogg, Brian S., Lauren, Larry, Shelley, Sheila Stearns, Roger Lahr, April, Linda Porter, John Northey, Shar Cookson, Jack, Colin, Christina, Judy Fry, Bay Merker, Tracy, Mary Brown, LaJada Clayton, Charles Nemitz, Bill, Mike Messina, Mary Jane and family, Gloria, Shea Trafton and family, Michael Huntley, Bill and Judith, Terry O'Fallon, Liz, 
Jim Devine, Stephen Rosco, Kathy, Ed McCoy, Natasha, Juana and Ramon Abundes, oh, Abundes, Cam Orley, Kathy, Elaine and the Harrington family, Stuart and Mary Kay Compton, Chris, G. Little, Haley, Nancy, Becky, Michael Shea, Becky, Katie Jackson, John Hawthorne, Jerry Carpenter, Jordan Michelle, Germaine Stivers, Maria Whitcraft, Michael, Hannah, Jane Olson, Heidi, Joyce Cole, Jacob Heller, Patrick, Rose Van Voist, Mike Sura, Mary, Tom Harrison, John Jensen, Jeanette Priest, Kathy's friend, Sam Orr, Debbie Peterson, Anne, Chad, Isaac, and Reuben, Annabelle Kreitz, and Scott Maxwell. For all those in recovery, for all those serving in the military and their families, especially Seth Walters, Emily Olson, Kevin Anderson, and Brandon Anderson. For those worldwide and here in Fergus County suffering from and dying from COVID-19. For Haiti and Afghanistan and those who suffer and seem to uh, promote suffering. And any further current issues you believe could be used, say to yourself at this time. Let us in your mercy hear all our prayers for all of these people and causes. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in remembering this day Scott Orr, whose ashes will be scattered later today, beloved son of our beloved Charlotte Orr. Let us pray. O oh God, our mercies, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Scott and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, Deal graciously with Charlotte and all of the Orr family and friends in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Returning to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And Let's greet one another in the name of the Lord. Jane and Darla and Judy and Lori and Kate and to your mom too. God's peace. Peace. Please be seated. We do have a few announcements today. First off, there is coffee hour following worship at the lower level of the parish hall next door. If you do walk over the lawn, you can avoid stairs that way with a slight ramp. And if you need some assistance to get there, just please yell. We're pretty good at that. So um, also, um, if you would like to help host a coffee hour, there is a sign up sheet next door that you can sign up to do that. Um, Today is, we're nearing the end of August, and, and on the last Tuesday of every month, we have Pint with the Priest, so that means this coming Tuesday, we have Pint with the Priest from 5 to 7. It will be at the Golden Spike in the Yogo Inn. So that's this Tuesday. Next Sunday is September, and that means worship goes to 10 a.m. So some of you will be here at night. <laughs> some may come at 11. So, but 10 o'clock beginning next Sunday. Are there other announcements this morning? Brian. Um, Jeanette wanted me to stand up and say that she really appreciates the cards and notes that she got from people. And uh, her uh, surgery recovery is really coming along okay. Um, she's up and around and doing pretty well. Uh, the only problem is that, that she has trouble sleeping at night for some reason. But on the other hand, I went uh, down and um, to say that I was taken off for church and she looked like she was sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so she may be, I think she's fibbing a little bit. She may sleep a little more than she thinks she does. Oh. <laughs> But anyway, she was very appreciative of everybody that sent their good wishes. <laughs> Thank you. Other announcements? Birthdays and anniversaries. I know we have at least one birthday. Bill Spoya turns 91 today. Yay! And Anne? Yes. When? Tuesday. Oh, great. The 31st. Is your birthday? Yes. All right. Yes, Tony. Mine was the 18th while I was gone because oh. of my grandson's wedding. <laughs> so we'll pray for you today. All right. Anyone else have a birthday or anniversary? Please turn with me to page 830, prayer number 50 as we pray for our friends celebrating birthdays. Page 830, prayer number 50. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, then come into his courts. Please join us in the offertory of hymn 656. Thank you.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat in peace. Hallelujah. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have just arrived, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood? Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel away with us. Oh, be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 344. 344.